going on right now. One on the House side, the State House, and that is where uh, Pete Arredondo is expected to testify. That testimony will be behind closed doors. We won't know what he tells committee members until a report is issued. That report is expected in mid-July. The other hearing is going on in the Texas State Senate. That hearing just started. It started with a moment of silence, and we have uh, colleagues in there, and they have been telling us that a timeline has been posted. We already knew from sources that Texas DPS Director Stephen McCraw was scheduled to testify and that he was going to be bringing in diagrams and going through the timeline. Well, we have a picture of that timeline, Jim and Poppy. We're going to be going through it to get specific details. Jim and Poppy. I can only imagine the parents' reaction seeing all this uh, play out. Rosa Flores, thanks so much. Let's speak now to CNN security correspondent, also former FBI special agent Josh Campbell. And, and Josh, it strikes me that the, the, the revelations today really, really greater detail about what we already knew, but, but that the, the police were armed, heavily armed. They had protective gear, those, uh, ballistic, including those ballistic shields, and they had them there early, right, With, within minutes of the start of this, and, and yet waited nearly an hour before going in. You were in the FBI. I just wonder, how would the FBI handle a law enforcement response like this, given those three factors? They had weapons, protective gear, and time. Well, the problem here, Jim, is that there isn't one problem. We've seen the seemingly avalanche of failure here, everything from tactics to leadership or lack thereof, and then also this issue of transparency. But to your point about tactics, I think everyone right now listening to my voice knows that in this era of mass shootings, officers are trained to go to the sound of gunfire. And, you know, that is a obviously a, a very difficult decision for an officer to make to put their own life on the line, but that is the profession that they are in. Now, no situation is the same. We know that oftentimes, you know, if, if an officer, officers uh, chase someone into a building and they don't suspect that there might be innocent people in danger, they might move to a barricade situation where they're calling the SWAT team. They're calling uh, some of the heavier weaponry, some of the heavier ballistic shields, uh, waiting a suspect out. This was not that. We know this was a school that was in session. There were children there that were present. We know that officers were sounding the alarm that, you know, there, there were shots fired. It was a few minutes that transpired between when the uh, suspect showed up and the, the shooting started. And so we know that even if the chief was not in communication, the officers there knew that they were dealing with an emergent situation. And so that's the key question. As you mentioned, we're, we're continuing to see uh, some of this, this information come out from reporting that, yes, these officers may not have been outgunned. That one image that we showed from the Austin American Statesman shows what looks like to be high-powered assault-style weapons those officers have behind those two ballistic shields. So again, just a, an avalanche of failure here, it seems. I will also point out, uh, Jim and Poppy, that this is Revictimizing this community, this kind of slow drip of information, this lack of right. transparency. I know I grew up not far from New Valley. I was actually talking with a, uh, a friend of mine uh, who pointed out a really good point. He said, Look, you know, in small town Texas, we were raised to respect law enforcement. You know, the local police chief, the local state trooper assigned to a region, they were held on a pedestal. And so you can imagine putting yourself right now in the shoes of the people of New Valley, continuing to be revictimized re yeah. by the lack of transparency and every new revelation that comes is just that, that more difficult to take. And can you imagine being a parent? I mean, that is why they are so yeah. up in arms, demanding answers, demanding clarity. You saw it at the school board meeting last night. Is there any reason, uh, any investigative reason, Josh, why more of this has not been laid out clearly and comprehensively, at least to the parents? Hmm. Right. I mean, we've seen in different incidents. I know when I was in the FBI, you would have the FBI team would brief victims and their family members on uh, certain aspects of an investigation, describing exactly what transpired. For example, I was there in San Bernardino after that mass shooting where the FBI brought in the family members and said, we want to walk you through what happened. We want to take you to the crime scene and show you exactly what happened. That wasn't for public consumption, but it was because obviously these are people with a vested interest in knowing what happened. The problem yeah. here is we're not seeing any of that for the victims and their family, but also the community who wants to have confidence in these law enforcement officers. So a lot of questions, as Rosa was just mentioning, there are these two hearings that are going on where hopefully we'll get some more answers uh, from the state Senate side where the head of DPS is supposed to be testifying. We understand that uh, we, it's, it's likely he's going to do somewhat of a show and tell about the type of door that these officers were coming up against. You know, it's, it, I was in law enforcement. It's not like on the movies where an officer shows up, they pull out their sidearm, they blow a deadbolt, it flies open. These are often reinforced 
Uh, but that doesn't answer the question about tactics, and that is if you are a police department with a school district in your jurisdiction, you might want to know how that building is secured, and if the threat is from within, you might want to know how to get in that building. Those are all the questions that we're hearing from the people in Uvalde. They just want the police to give them answers, and so far there have been very few answers.